we've seen how organisms use cell communication to rapidly send signals with the nervous system and activate the cells of the immune system. The next few videos will give an overview of how the endocrine system uses cell-cell communication to accomplish goals like maintaining homeostasis in organisms. This is video 7.11 to introduce the endocrine system with a focus on the hypothalamus pituitary axis. The focus is these two objectives, understanding the parts of endocrine signaling in general, as well as zooming in on the hypothalamus and pituitary gland as an illustrative example of endocrine signaling. Even though endocrine signaling is a new topic for us, the basic principles of cell signaling and cell communication are still in play. Endocrine signaling still uses a signaling cell to send a ligand to specific receptors on a target cell and eventually trigger a response in that target cell. But in endocrine signaling pathways, we call the ligand a hormone, as you can see right here as these red dots. Next, the signaling cells that make hormones are typically part of an organ called a gland, and a gland can have several endocrine cells that are making hormones. One of the characteristics of hormones is that hormones travel through th throughout the body and the blood using blood vessels to reach their target organ. And just like other signaling pathways, target cells can be affected by the hormones only if those cells have specific receptors that are complementary to the hormone signaling molecule. Now, in an anatomy and physiology class, studying the endocrine system would mean studying all of these endocrine glands as well as their hormones and the responses and their targets. But in AP biology, we're going to simplify things a bit, mostly focusing on the hypothalamus, pituitary gland, and a couple of other key signaling pathways. Now, you may already know that the hypothalamus and pituitary gland both have something to do with the brain, but this diagram gives us a better idea of where each organ is located. So you can see a person's head right here and obviously their brain in there. And the pituitary gland sits in this little pocket um, of the skull that's just behind the bridge of the nose. And the pituitary gland is divided into the anterior and posterior lobes, each with unique functions. And just above these lobes of the pituitary gland is the hypothalamus, as you can see right here. Let's take a closer look. All right, new diagram, so let's get oriented. So you can see the hypothalamus um, at the top here and the pituitary gland down below with the anterior pituitary gland on the left and the posterior pituitary on the right. And the hypothalamus and pituitary glands are connected by blood vessels that are shown in here in kind of blue and in red and purple, um, and by neurons. The hypothalamus itself has a lot of neurons, and we want to focus on these two different batches here that are different colors. The green set of hypothalamus neurons extend from the hypothalamus all the way down into the posterior pituitary gland. And in fact, the green neurons are part of both the hypothalamus and posterior pituitary. Now, these purple neurons are completely contained in the hypothalamus. There's the body of the neuron, and then the axon part um, is down here. And we'll see that the purple neurons use these blood vessels right here to communicate with the anterior pituitary gland down here. Now, the anterior pituitary gland contains mostly endocrine cells, these blue guys over here. And now that we know the anatomical layout, let's consider how the hypothalamus and pituitary gland communicate with one another. The posterior pituitary gland is a little more simple to follow, so we'll start with that. Now, again, to get oriented, see the hypothalamus on top and the pituitary gland on, on bottom down here. Unfortunately, in this diagram, our anterior and posterior are flipped, so in this diagram, the posterior is now on the left here. Now, remember that there are neurons that extend from the hypothalamus into the posterior pituitary gland, as you can see right here. Now, the hormones that we want to follow are shown as red dots right here, all throughout these neuroendocrine cells. The hormones are actually made in the cell bodies, or soma, of the neurons in the hypothalamus. But then the hormones travel down the axons of these neurons and are stored in the axon terminals that are located in the posterior pituitary. And then when it's time to release the hormones, the axon terminals release the hormones into the blood vessels down here in the posterior pituitary. Now, hormones that follow this template are ADH, antidiuretic hormone, and oxytocin.
The anterior pituitary is a little more complicated. In this case, there are two sets of hormones. The first set of hormones is made by these neurosecretory cells in the hypothalamus. And like every hormone, these hormones made by the hypothalamus travel through the bloodstream by entering the bloodstream right here. But the hormones only have to go a very short distance to reach the anterior pituitary. And then a second set of hormones comes in. So once the endocrine cells in the anterior pituitary get the signal from the hypothalamus, these red circle hormones, the anterior pituitary gland releases a different hormone into the bloodstream down here, these red triangles. And those red triangle hormones made by the anterior pituitary travel throughout the whole body. And some examples of anterior pituitary hormones are shown in these pink boxes down here. And you can see growth hormone and prolactin and some others. So the title of this video was the hypothalamus pituitary axis. And an axis is a straight line around which things are evenly arranged. So looking at the signaling relationships of the hypothalamus and anterior pituitary might be easier to understand if we line them up like axes. Now, in each case, the hypothalamus is at the top and uses a hormone to communicate with the anterior pituitary, here, here, and here. Three different pathways of communication between the hypothalamus and anterior pituitary. Now, that communication between the hypothalamus and anterior pituitary triggers the anterior pituitary to release the second hormone that is then released into the blood to affect a specific target gland, here, here, and here. Three different hormones, made by the anterior pituitary gland to stimulate three different downstream glands. Um, each of those anterior pituitary homo hormones from the last slide follows that same pattern, and you see the three examples here, but any of those examples from the last slide will um, do the same thing. Now, let's zoom in on this thyroid pathway to better understand what's happening. Okay, so here we go. Hypothalamus, anterior pituitary, thyroid gland, right? And here's how the communication works. First, the hypothalamus signals the anterior pituitary gland with TRH, a thyroid-releasing hormone. And then the anterior pituitary gland responds to TRH by secreting TSH, thyroid-stimulating hormone. And the TSH ligand travels through the blood to the thyroid gland, which is in your neck area, and then the thyroid glands respond to that TSH by releasing thyroid hormone into the blood. And as you can see in this table, thyroid hormone acts like a ligand for so many target cells to cause all of these diverse responses here. Another critical aspect of endocrine signaling is the concept of regulation by negative feedback. In general, negative feedback is when the end product of a process reduces the stimulus of that process. All right, another way of saying this is like when the goal of a process is reached, achieving the goal acts to shut the process down. Now, let me explain a little bit. One thing you might have noticed in these diagrams is that the diagrams have pluses right here and right here and minuses right here and right here and right here. Well, in this case, the plus means a stimulatory response and the minus means an inhibitory response. And the placement of the pluses and minuses form a pattern in all of these signaling pathways, right? Hypothalamus plus anterior pituitary plus, and then this final target gland. And then the minuses come around um, back here. So let's zoom in again on this thyroid pathway to understand a little more deeply. So here's how that negative feedback works. Remember, the hypothalamus released TRS, TRH to stimulate the anterior pituitary to release TSH, which stimulated the thyroid gland to make thyroid hormone. Well, as soon as the thyroid hormone signals to all of those target organs, the mission is accomplished. The purpose of releasing thyroid hormone has been achieved. And so now the signaling will be shut down using negative feedback. And these arrows along the left side here show how thyroid hormone acts as a ligand for receptors on the hypothalamus the anterior pituitary gland, and the thyroid gland. And this way, the thyroid gland signals the hypothalamus to inhibit TRH production. And the thyroid gland um, signals the anterior pituitary gland to inhibit TSH production. And the thyroid gland 
signals itself to shut down thyroid hormone production. That's negative feedback. So let's recap. Endocrine signaling uses the basics of all signaling pathways with a little twist. Signaling cells in the endocrine glands make hormone ligands that travel through the bloodstream to their target cells and cause a response. Now, a hub of endocrine signaling is the interaction between the hypothalamus and pituitary gland. The hypothalamus and posterior pituitary gland share a set of neurons that make, store, and secrete two hormones called ADH and oxytocin. On the other hand, a separate set of hypothalamus neurons uses hormones to communicate with the anterior pituitary gland and stimulate the anterior pituitary gland to secrete a bunch of other hormones that target even more endocrine glands in the next step. And together, this communication with the hypothalamus, anterior pituitary gland, and other glands is called the HPA axis. And finally, hormones use negative feedback to stop their own production once the goal of the hormone is reached.